What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and I thought about doing just a regular old, you know, cut and dry review of the Fractal Design Nano S, but I thought one of the best ways to really review the thing, considering I'm a diehard water cooler, is just to go ahead and do a build in it. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do it kind of vloggy style, only using the better camera, not the AX33, to try and get you guys at least something, you know, worth looking at. I mean, come on, this face in HD, does it really get much better than this? Whether you're looking for a pump, reservoir, custom GPU block, or a complete loop in a box, AlphaCool's wide range of products can make your next water cooling adventure an easy one. Click the link in the description for more details. So there it is right there. You can see it truly is just a um, really shrunk down version of the Define S. It's got a lot of the same functions. It's got the exact same aesthetic on the front, on the top. Um, it's got the side window on the side. So it's gonna be able to show off all of your components. Inside, it's got the exact same uh, mounting mechanism on the wall so that you can have a place to put your reservoirs. Um, cutout tray there for the back of the motherboard, which is really nice to get access to your coolers. And remember, this one is designed to be a um, mini ITX capable of water cooling. So that's what my focus is really going to be on today, is just how much water cooling we can actually fit into here comfortably. So a little better lighting now. This is what the guts look like here. You can fit a single, uh, which appears to be a 140 millimeter fan on the front or two 120 millimeter fans on the front. So you can do a front mounted rad. Same thing on the top here. You could do a uh, dual 120 millimeter radiator up top. So that's what we're gonna be trying to fit in there. You got a lot of your grommet pass throughs right here on the side, just like the Define S. Uh, it's all the exact same. Uh, concepts here just literally just shrunk down. On the back of the motherboard cutout you have a place there so you can mount your hard drive or SSDs and then you've also got one right here on the bottom uh, the floor of the case where you can also mount an SSD or a hard drive or a water pump. So you've, Fractal's really thought about putting a lot of stuff in this case uh, for mini ITX. But Jay, I don't get it. To fit all that stuff inside a case, wouldn't it have been better just to make it a micro ATX or something like that? Well, that's not really what this case is designed to be. Now on camera, it's really hard to actually translate how small it really is. And as I'm looking at this going, okay, I've got to account for the thickness of radiators and pump and tubing. It's actually gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but they've really set you up to have a lot of options to be able to get this done and get it done right. So I'm gonna do the best that I can here. But I'm gonna be fitting in here a water-cooled GTX 970 gigabyte G1 gaming version. Uh, I'm gonna be putting in the EVGA Z97 Stinger with a 4790K, the exact same one I used in the Node 202 build. Uh, I pulled that out and I'm gonna be putting it in here. Haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do soft tubing or rigid tubing. I'd kind of like to do rigid. I love doing rigid. I love to do rigid tubing. It just looks so clean and it's shiny. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and see exactly what we can fit inside this bad boy. Yeah, I'm bad. I never clean this block out. Fortunately, I think I wanna do blue, blue inside of this build. And I'm probably gonna be doing, uh, believe it or not, like a pastel. I'm gonna be trying out uh, their super pastel and see how that works out. But this is gonna be kind of a showpiece as well. We'll talk about that a little bit in the future, but this is probably gonna be on display somewhere. Now, just like it's Bigger Brother, it does also feature the Maju Vent design, which literally just pops out. And once you pop it out, you can see you've got your offset mounting here for either your 120 millimeter fans or your uh, 140 millimeter fans right there. So you can do dual 140s or dual 120s. You just have to keep in mind though that um, it's not guaranteed to support 140 offset here for water cooling radiators because it does start to get really close to the motherboard. So it's gonna really depend on the thickness of the hardware that you're putting in here. But I do recommend on a, on a build like this to go with 30 millimeter radiators at the thickest and then you know standard 25 millimeter thick fans. Again, just like it's Big Brothers, it's got the giant uh, filter that actually runs the entire length of the case so you can get power supply filter and any bottom fans that you might have mounted, they're all filtered and you can access it from the front. So it makes cleaning really easy if this is under your desk or in a cabinet. Chances are a case this small would be in some sort of a cabinet, so that works really well. And then just like it's Bigger Brother, it has the magnet uh, for the front, magnet closing vent and filter for the front fans. Really easy to get to, really easy to pop off. And finishing up the walk around of the case on the back, you can see you've got a hard drive mounting tray right there. And then there's the other side of the one I showed you that's behind the motherboard tray so that you can mount your SSDs, um, you know, and other things to that. So they've really got that really nicely figured out. And then of course, just like every other fractal case that's been built in the last couple of years, Velcro straps to keep your cables nice and tidy. 
and nice channeling to keep things uh, as orderly as you possibly can. The biggest challenge when building in a small form factor case is getting the power supply cables in check. So that's, that's always the challenge and make sure you have plenty of room to tuck those away. But if you look at the thickness right here on the bottom of the case, you can see you've got a pretty decent amount of thickness there for keeping things nice and, I mean, you can see, come on, focus, there we go. We've got about that much thickness there when it comes to cable depth. I know I should have just grabbed a measuring tape. I don't have one readily available and I'm being lazy. So that's, that's just what we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys something here that I really am nerding out about this case that I absolutely love. Is that little notch right there in the frame of the case. Because these screws, even though they are thumb screws, they're typically tightened at the factory to where you can't get them off with your fingers. So you've got to use a screwdriver. So instead of having to go in there at like some funky angle because the case is in the way, they've made that little notch. You can actually go straight with your screwdriver. I don't know why that, that that's something that's so simple, but I absolutely love that. I didn't even know that was there until right now. Freaking sick. All right, so I've been sitting here for a while contemplating this. In fact, longer than you guys even know because I saw this case and like the press material for it long before it was actually launched. I'm really late to the party when it comes to getting this review done, but I wanted to do a build, not just a review. And the part that I saw on paper that concerned me was the amount of room right here, as you can see. Um, and I even mentioned this to Fractal Design. I said, you know, I'm curious to see how well I can work past the card length and have room here for a front radiator and fans and still have room for a pump and reservoir, which technically I could use like this as I knock over my, my pump here. This is really hard. You guys are seeing this in like first person perspective. This is Jay's first person view. What if I wore a, a body cam someday and built a computer? Would that be weird? I don't know. Anyway, you can use a tiny little res like this guy here and it'll mount up here, no problem. But then you have some funky routing of tubes to try and make it all tie in together. Now the problem is you only have so much room right here between the end of the card and where the radiator will go right here. I personally would mount the fans on the filter side, ditch the filter, put the fans on this side between the backing of the front and then put the radiator on the inside so you have easy access to the tubes. This isn't a problem though. It's just a, you have to make a compromise here where you either have to deal with going with a small res like this and mounting it there and then putting the pump separate down there. And this thing does slide, by the way. I moved it all the way to the front. You can slide it on these tracks and position this where you want it. Um, and what I'm thinking about doing is taking this, mounting it on the front right here and using my long reservoir so it's, you know fills up that space and then only going with a top 240 millimeter rad, which would be more than enough to cool the 970 I have here and the uh, radiator that would go on top. I mean that, and the 4790K, there'd be more than enough cooling for that. So yeah, this is how it would look with the longer reservoir. And I think that that actually looks better. It fills up that space more. In fact, I wish I had a little bit taller one, but that's actually gonna be just fine. Cause remember we have to account for the thickness of the radiator that's gonna go up top. I think this is gonna look better ultimately. I'm not gonna have a front radiator in here, which I would have really liked to have. The other thing is I know some folks are saying, well, why don't you just put a 120 right there on the back? Well, I tried that. The problem is it's a very tight space right there and the radiators don't actually fit in that space right there. Yeah, it doesn't actually fit, so that's unfortunate. You know, there is room to put this guy in the bottom, but then I've got uh, another issue when it comes to mounting this guy, I mean, I could have it floating on the back wall, I guess. I could do it that way, but I don't know how well. See, that's, that's the point of why I wanted to do this review as a build, because then you can see the different options and way of thinking you've got to go through when it comes to installing this. Well, I just learned that there is barely, and I do mean barely, enough room for me to be able to put the pump there in between, and the reservoir, in between the GPU. It is actually touching the GPU backplate right there. Um, and the fans right here. And again, it is touching the fans. It's all just kind of sandwiched in there. Um, really not sure if I just want to do, if I want to do that and try and do the radiator on the inside, because I also learned, if, if you look right there, that the fittings fit perfectly in between the gaps over there. It's almost like they thought of this, huh? Yeah, it's almost like they thought of this. But anyway, yeah, so I could technically do that and have a dual rad, but it's not, I don't think it's necessary for this build and I do think it, it's gonna become a point where it looks really cluttered. It can easily look too cluttered in a case this size. And I do think that that's ending up the case right here with these fans having to be sandwiched on the inside here. Um, it's actually touching down here against the pump. There's a little extra room here with the res versus the pump. 
as you can see, it sticks out a little bit right there. Wow, it sounds like I'm in a jungle, doesn't it? Anyway, yeah, I'm just so torn on this. All right, so that's what I ended up going with. I'm not gonna do a front-mounted radiator, just a fan so we can get good airflow in the case. And then the, as you can see, the reservoir is right there. Now I know a lot of folks are gonna ask me what pump and stuff that this is. This is just a Lang DDC pump with an EK uh, chrome or nickel-plated cover, a heat sink cover there on the bottom. It's the Bits Power Reservoir combo for the top of it. Um, but as you can see, it's, Got a push down tube inside right there so that we can return the fluid from the top. It's gonna to pull the fluid in and then it's gonna push it out this fitting here and it's gonna go right to the graphics card and then through the loop. So that's the way that this loop is gonna go. So this loop order is gonna go reservoir pump, GPU, CPU, radiator, and then back into the reservoir. And I know some folks are gonna go, shouldn't you go GPU to radiator back to CPU so you're not putting hot coolant into the CPU? Well, the entire loop is gonna equalize when it comes to temperature based on how much thermal dissipation the radiator can do. So it doesn't mean that I'm gonna be heating up the CPU by having a GPU under load. It just doesn't work that way. I, and, and I'm gonna to have to do a video with temperature sensors throughout the loop so people can see it just doesn't work that way. Anyway, back on topic here, let's continue with the build. So I spent enough time talking about radiators and pump installs and reservoirs and stuff. I'm gonna just go ahead and build this thing and through the magic of editing, you guys will get to see the final result right about. Well guys, here she is. I hope you like it. Uh, yeah, this was actually a really fun build to do. The uh, Define, or the, the Define Nano S, I wanna call it Define S because it looks obviously so much like it. You really can't tell how small this case is on camera, but here's my hand. I mean, if that gives you any kind of indication. You can see that the graphics card length is, um, it, it, it goes all the way to the reservoir right there. Now, here's what I wanna do. I wanna talk about a couple things with this, a couple, things to be in mind, you know, to watch out for when you're building in this case. Fractal Design has done a great job at designing this case to be able to accommodate a lot of different things. A 240 rad up top, a 280 rad is not going to work up top at all. That's gonna be specifically for air cooling. And the reason being for that is if you look at the top um, down on here, let's see if I can do this and get it in focus. If you look at the top down, when you move the radiator from the offset like it is right now, how it's all the way to the side, more in the middle, it's gonna interfere with motherboard components. And in fact, the 240 as it sits um, is pretty close to making some contact with the memory right here. In fact, I had to make sure I got low profile memory and something that doesn't have memory heat sinks that stick up because it would literally interfere with the fans. The fan does push down with a standard 25 millimeter rate or 30 millimeter radiator and 25 millimeter fans like you can see right there, uh, it does hang down over the RAM by about four to five millimeters, depending on you know, how, how thick the actual radiator is. And it will, it will impact 
on this if you try and use a 280 rad it's not going to work period um, the 8 pin EPS power is like way back in there so I had to thread that in basically I had to take the whole loop out and plug that in and then put it build everything around it so there's no unplugging that with this loop filled the power supply here is an EVGA 650 G2 supernova it's uh, 80 plus gold as you can see um, lots of room here for cables this is their custom cable set that you can get to go along with it I went with white um, because I thought that it was a good pop and uh, I, I, I wanted to kind of incorporate the fractal colors here. So I did mix up some pastel coolant uh, to match the blue that's on the fans right there. As you can see, I wanted it to match the, the fractal blue. So it's kind of a very fractal theme, uh, but you could even go with a, light, a longer power supply and still have some room right here. I did obviously use the built-in pump bracket down there. It is on a track so you can slide it. So that's how I was able to make it, you know, clear the graphics card and uh, I'm really happy with the way that turned out. Now I said on Twitter that I did something with this build that I've never done before. And some folks were like, oh, it's obvious that you didn't bend the tubes. Well, no, these are the exact same 90s that I used with the Parvum build. Uh, I just took all those out when I took the case apart and they've been sitting in my parts bin, in my, you know, my, my fittings bin, and I reused those for this. But this tubing, I did not bend because it is glass. This is glass tubing. This was actually sent to me by Mayhem. This is a 12 millimeter OD by nine millimeter uh, ID, I believe, inner diameter. It's actually a smaller diameter than the PETG, but I wanted to do something different. So I actually cut this and I, I, did, I looked at tutorials on how to cut glass and I got a, a, a glass scorer, this guy right here. And then I literally took the glass tubing, I chucked it into my drill and then spun the drill while using this to score the glass. You squeeze that down and it scores the glass. And then you literally just snap the glass. And then I use files to smooth it out. And then that's how I got the glass cut to length. I've actually had this glass tubing for a while. This was one of the things Mayhem sent over after the whole fiasco with them, where they were like, hey man, we're sorry. Do you want to check out some stuff? And I was like, yeah, sure, send it over. And they sent over different diameters of the glass tubing. I barely had enough, but I think it looks great. And that brings me to a point. Some folks on Twitter and Instagram were very judgmental to be like, why aren't you bending your tubes? That's just lazy, blah, 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 and making some very ignorant comments. It's obvious here, there's a reason why I didn't bend these. And rather than making an asinine comment on social media, why don't you just wait and find out why someone did something? If a reviewer does their job well, or a builder does their job well, they will explain why they did certain things. And uh, ignorant comments like that just really aren't necessary. I mean, I know it's the internet and all, but if you had just simply waited, because now you know they're glass tubes and that's why it's not bent. Now you can bend glass, but it takes a lot of heat. And it's amazing how rigid the glass actually is. So this is PETG right here on the left. And then this is uh, glass right here on the right. And you can see just how much thicker the wall is for the glass. And this is really, I mean, it's really robust. I, it, it's way stronger than I thought it would be. I have no uh, reservations about using glass in a build like this. It's very, very strong. And I will show you guys in a tutorial on how to cut glass. Uh, it's really easy. I was, it's the first time I ever did it. I don't know who did the glass tubing first. I don't really care who did glass tubing first. I'm not saying I'm the first person to ever do glass tubing. I am saying it's the first time I ever did glass tubing and it's a lot easier than I thought it would be. So if, uh, what I like about it is the fact that there's not gonna be any clouding whatsoever. It's got fingerprints and stuff all over it right now, but compared to you know, the plastic tube, I mean, you can see in the plastic right there, it's just scratched and marred and the glass isn't gonna do that. So that's why we went with glass. So all in all, I'm really happy with the way the build turned out. If you're curious about performance, well, I'm not gonna do any performance numbers on this simply because it's a 970 I've already reviewed and a 4790K that I've already reviewed and the performance numbers are gonna be no different. It's just a different case and it has water cooling in it. Uh, but this case does easily accommodate all-in-one water coolers. And as you can see, it can accommodate a pretty um, hefty custom loop in here as well. So it's something that, um, it, it's, it's an ITX case, a mini ITX case, and some folks would be like, well, well, it should be bigger so you can go ATX. Well, then that would be an ATX case. Or it should be smaller. Well, they already have smaller cases. They got the Node series, and you should be checking that out. But I think that this case is a perfect footprint for home theater PCs. I'm gonna actually use this in my living room. It's so nice, I want this to be seen. And uh, I'm really happy with the way that, that it turned out. It was really easy to build in. And one of the things too that I did with this loop uh, that I kind of want to show you here is the way that I routed these tubes here is uh, it allows me to be able to actually, to actually get my hands in there. As you see, I could have filled this area with tubes, but I can get my hand in there and I can, 
I can touch stuff. I don't, I don't really need to necessarily touch things, but I can touch stuff. I can't get the RAM out though without taking the radiator out. So everything is kind of threaded in there. Fortunately, all the hardware was already tested, so I knew everything worked. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it turned out fantastic. So anyway, if you guys like the build, you know what to do. Mash that like button. If you guys didn't like it, well, feel free to tell me why you didn't like it. What would you have done differently? And tell me what you guys think about the glass tubes. If you want me to do a glass tubing tutorial, please put it in the comments, like the video, or tell me on social media. Please, Jay, do a glass cutting tutorial. Um, that would be, uh, I, I think more people should be using glass, and it's not that much more expensive but it is very, very uh, unforgiving. What I mean by that is there's no doing small trims if you make it a little too long and you've got to be very precise. Um, and it's, it's actually not that hard. I mocked the whole thing up with PETG and then used the PETG tubes as my templates for how long the cuts should be. And then it was very, very easy. So I'll do that video soon. I'll show you guys how to do glass cutting tutorial. Um, regardless of whether you guys say, no, we don't care about it. I'm still gonna do it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching today's video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Tell me what you guys also thought about this vloggy review style. I kind of like the vloggy review. I think it worked out really well. This was more like a, a vloggy build review. It's kind of like the three favorite things all mixed into one. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm rambling now. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. These builds aren't possible without you, so huge thank you for your support. Thanks again, guys.